Hello everybody and welcome to part 23 of Kerbal Space Program, The Journey Continues. We start here on Kerbin at the KSC where we're blasting off with one of our Brunel Mark II rockets. Corkin Kerman is in command for this one and he is joined by Erison and Grados. Our intrepid threesome are off to our space station, the Socrates, and to our interplanetary craft that's docked there, the Ptolemy, just to continue the refueling operation to try and get the Ptolemy turned around in time for its uh, departure to Dres in about a hundred days. Underneath that fairing is one of the 36 ton fuel tanks full of liquid fuel and we are going to use that to finish off filling up the Ptolemy's main tanks. As many of you will have realised by now, this is basically just a carbon copy of the last mission from the last episode. But, uh, you know, you've got to get that fuel up there somehow. And uh, after this, we've got to uh, we've got to go and do the engine block change, the engine block upgrade, and also get the, uh, get the monopropellant and fuel oxidizer mix topped up on the rest of the tanks. Once in orbit, our Kerbals can begin the process of lifting their payload off of the stack. Now, this is a slightly more involved procedure for the Brunel Mark II, but... Uh, it's just what you need to do to uh, get as much lifting capability out of this rocket as is possible whilst ensuring that you don't leave any space junk behind. I've gone, what is it, the best part of two series now without leaving a single scrap of the stuff in space and, uh, well, I'm not about to start doing it now. Arriving at the space station then, our Kerbals bring their very heavy payload into dock. We're using one of the Ptolemy's rearmost docking ports. It seemed to be a fitting place given that that's the craft we're actually refuelling. And uh, once we're securely attached, it's just a simple case of transferring the fuel across. So with the Ptolemy's liquid fuel tanks full, we briefly turn our attention to the fuel oxidizer situation. We transfer everything out of the engine block because we're going to need that empty once we, uh, once we take it off and switch it out. Um, and we transfer that all across to the lander's fuel tanks. Now, unlike the last episode, I'm also going to transfer a little bit of uh, fuel and oxidizer across from our CSM to the, uh, to the lander's tanks, which nearly fills it up. I can probably siphon off a bit of fuel from the uh, from any future missions and that should fill that right up, meaning we only need one of those um, one of those nine ton fuel tanks worth of fuel and oxidizer mix to finish fueling this thing right up. Not including the monopropellant, of course. With their orbital tasks complete then, all that's left is for our Kerbals to make their way home, discarding that now empty fuel tank to burn up in the atmosphere. Once again, trying to land near the KSC, once again, I don't do too well. I keep making very fine adjustments to this thing because there was one time, if I remember correctly, where I made quite a large adjustment and I just fell well short, so... <laughs> I'm trying to go at this a bit cautiously and I'm not entirely convinced that the, uh, the cautious approach is working. Anyway, at the very least, our Kerbals do splash down safely in Kerbin's oceans, not too far away from the KSC island. We still have a few things left to do on our Getting the Ptolemy Turned Around checklist, so to tick the next one off, we are launching one of our Mark III shuttles. The crew of the Ptolemy's mission to Ike uh, are well rested and recuperated by now, so uh, Kerdar, Donfort, Bargel, and Johnny Kerman will be along for the ride to make sure this one goes by without a hitch. So this mission, as I mentioned earlier, is to upgrade the engine block on the Ptolemy from the uh, from the Lanta engines to the liquid core nuclear engines, both engines which come with uh, KSP Interstellar, one of the mods I'm using on this series. This upgrade should give us uh, a couple of thousand more meters per second of delta V, not as much as I'd originally hoped when I first uh, switched from the Lanta engines to these, but uh, still not bad. Uh, the Ptolemy doesn't need that upgrade to get to Dres, as I've mentioned in a previous episode, but more Delta V is never a bad thing, and it does give us some extra flexibility on our transfer windows, both, uh, both to and from Dres. Once we're in orbit, there's no complex messing about with the payload with the Mark III shuttle, like there is with the Brunel Mark II, no. Uh, all of our complex messing about with the payload will come when we get to the space station and to the Ptolemy, and actually have to change those engine blocks over, which is a task I always dread, because uh, it's just so fiddly and it just takes an age, but um, we've kind of got to keep one eye on the end goal here, which is an improved craft with more Delta V, and hence more flexibility. Anyway, arriving at the space station, our Kerbals bring the shuttle into dock. We have to get it turned the right way around so that we can uh, access the cargo bay, and also so that we don't scrape the wings or the tail fin along the length of the Ptolemy, because that would sort of undo all the things we're trying to do in this episode. 
With the shuttle safe and secure then, it's time for our space tugs to leap into action and for this hellish task to begin. We start by taking off the old engine block from the Ptolemy and transferring that across to one of the spare large docking ports on the Socrates space station. One of the tugs then gently coaxes the new engine block out of the shuttle's cargo bay, where it's joined by its friend before they attach that to the rear of the Ptolemy. With that done, all that's left is to dispose of the old engine block. Just using the one tug this time, we get that transferred into the cargo bay of the shuttle, get it docked on, and uh, get the tugs docked back onto the space station. Okay, it doesn't look that bad when I go through it like that, but this mission was an hour and 34 minutes to play through, and I wasn't being particularly shy with the time acceleration either. Anyway, with the switch successfully made, our Kerbals make their way back down to the surface, causing a major environmental incident as they go by ditching what is effectively quite a large quantity of nuclear waste to burn up in the atmosphere. There are some minor complications on our way back to the KSC, by which I mean we nearly flip out. Uh, not quite, but nearly, so we do have to burn the rest of our fuel to get back there, but uh, we do eventually get a nice gentle landing on the runway. So for the last of our servicing missions to the Ptolemy, we are blasting off from the KSC with one of our Brunel Mark I rockets. Corkin, Erison and Grados are back in charge for this one. So as I mentioned earlier, this mission is just to bring up the last of the fuel to the Ptolemy, uh, fill up its monopropellant tanks and also the lander's refueling tank, which is part of the engine block we just brought up. Uh, I forgot to mention it at the time, but I did top up the uh, the lander's tank uh, with fuel from the shuttle's main tank, so uh, that's now full, so we should have enough here just to finish off that job. Now, the Ptolemy's mission to Drez will be the penultimate expedition of this series. I've mentioned a few times, I set myself a goal for this series of uh, just finishing off landing on all of the, all of the uh, major rocky planets. We're ignoring any minor moons like Gilly, so we just have Drez and Eve to go. And, uh, of course, when I say a mission to all of those planets, I mean uh, get them there, get them down, and get them back again safely to Kerbin in one piece, which, uh, for Eve, is going to be the challenging part. Once that's all done, I'm not sure what's going to happen to our current generation of interplanetary vehicles, uh, the Ptolemy class, as I suppose they should be called. We are probably not going to need two, we might not even need one. If I do get rid of one, then... The Galileo is the newer craft, it's had some minor upgrades over the Ptolemy, so uh, it might be time to say farewell to the Ptolemy. Send it into the atmosphere, give it a Viking funeral and all that, but I'm still not sure yet. We'll have to see how we go on that. Arriving at the space station, our crew bring their payload into dock. Again, we're going for the docking ports on the engine block, which have uh, moved for the newer engine block to allow those radiator panels to be placed correctly. And we get ourselves nice and secure, and now we just need to transfer the fuel. We start with the monopropellant before we uh, move on to the fuel and oxidizer, and of course, giving the uh, giving the Ptolemy a thorough inspection to make sure we have filled every last milliliter of its tanks with all the fuel we can. I do not want to start a mission and suddenly discover that one of the tanks is empty, but no, it does appear that the Ptolemy is absolutely full to the brim, and with that, our craft is ready to fly. All that's left then is for our Kerbals to say farewell to their comrades aboard the station and to head back to the surface of Kerbin, ditching that empty fuel tank once again into the atmosphere. Again, we're trying to land at the KSC. Again, we don't manage it, although I think this is the closest we've come. Um, I've given up making tiny, tiny adjustments. I'm making larger adjustments now, and it seems to be paying some dividends. Who knows, someday in the future maybe we'll manage it. Landing on a planet, not a problem. Landing at the KSC, a bit more difficult, apparently. Anyway, as I said, that is the last of the basic servicing missions to the Ptolemy completed. I think now it's well past the time that we should uh, change the scenery and go and look at something else. It's not a massive change of scenery to begin with. We are back at the space station about 60 days later, and our science lab is full to the brim of science once again, so we get that transmitting back down to Kerbin. This latest batch will mean that we have a little over 11,000 points of science to spend, which means we can unlock seven nodes on that, uh, that new 10th tier of the tech tree. As I've been doing in the past, I'm not going to be in any rush to spend this science. I'll just be picking up those tech tree nodes as and when we need them. Uh, one thing I might be getting pretty early on is an upgrade to those liquid core nuclear engines. As I've said previously, I'm not sure if that uh, applies to all engines in the game or just to new ones, which uh, means I probably should have picked it up before we uh, change the engine block over, but uh, 
Never mind, you live and learn. Uh, anyway, it's time for us to go and fry some bigger fish and uh, see if we can get an even bigger change of scenery into the bargain. About a day later, we find ourselves here in orbit around Moho, which I think counts as a big enough change of scene and uh, is also coincidentally hot enough to fry fish, so it all kind of works. Um, oh god, what am I talking about? Uh, anyway, yes, the Galileo is about an orbit away from its transfer burn, so it's time for us to start planning. So this is a pretty standard transfer manoeuvre. Uh, once again, I'm using Alex Moon's uh, KSP launch window planner. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, well, if I, I will if I remember. Uh, it's going to take us about 100 metres per second less than it would otherwise have done because of our inclined orbit, which is a bonus. Um, 100 metres per second of delta V doesn't sound like a lot, but when our, uh, our safety margin is 1,000 metres per second, it's, it's pretty decent. This takes a fair bit of time, uh, not as long as some of the other transfer planning I've done during this series, but uh, still, a fair old while. But eventually, we do get ourselves set up on a decent encounter with Kerbin, and uh, now we have to go and make the Galileo ready to perform its manoeuvre. We start by getting the ship pointed in the right direction, and then we time accelerate to uh, near to our manoeuvre node. Uh, a little too close to the manoeuvre node, in fact. I overshoot my intended start point of the manoeuvre, but we're going slowly enough round the planet that it shouldn't really matter. Nonetheless, we have to get the engines activated and fired up pretty quickly. Um, one thing I do like about those, these liquid core nuclear engines that I certainly do not miss about the Lanta engines is the Lanta engines had this nasty habit of switching over to using monopropellant when you, when you switched away from the vehicle, which meant if you weren't paying attention you could very quickly drain all of your monopropellant. The liquid core engines are a lot better behaved in that respect. Now, normally when I do these burns, I just complete the whole thing and then switch to map view to see if we've got the encounter. I'm not doing that this time. I'm switching to map view towards the end of the burn just to see if we've got the encounter, if we need to stop burning early or keep burning a little longer. And uh, it works well here. It has saved us a little bit of fuel in that regard. I tried to do a little bit of fine tuning, but it's a bit awkward with these uh, liquid core nuclear engines. The lower the throttle, the lower their efficiency, so uh, I have to limit that. We're on a decent encounter nonetheless, so uh, we'll, just, we'll just be satisfied with that and do a correction burn as we get closer to Kerbin. So the Galileo is on its way home with its bounty of science in duplicate, but uh, long before it gets there we are going to need to launch the Ptolemy to Dres, and before that we've still got a couple of things we need to do, so uh, let's go and get cracking with those. So the Ptolemy isn't quite ready to fly yet, it is missing, of course, its most vital component, its crew. So to rectify the situation, we are taking off in our space plane, which I have dubbed the Kestrel, because all the other decent bird names were hideously cliched. Once again, there haven't been any upgrades to this craft since the last time we used it, uh, although I have gone and unlocked the, uh, the upgrade to the liquid core nuclear engine, and uh, as soon as we get the Ptolemy flying, we'll be able to see whether or not that's actually had any effect. Anyway, in charge of delivering this precious cargo to the Ptolemy is Greyfried Kerman, and she is joined by Erison, and further joined, of course, by the crew, which will be the same as for the Ptolemy's last mission. Kurdard, Donfort, Bargel, and Johnny Kerman. Uh, once the Ptolemy is all ready to go, I will be doing my normal trick of uh, taking it away from the space station, uh, raising it up to a decent parking orbit, and then taking a, uh, taking a tanker up to top up its fuel tanks, just so that it's got the most amount of Delta V it can have before it starts its transfer burn. Anyway, our Kestrel space plane reaches orbit and begins its journey towards the Ptolemy. I have made some slight adjustments to the ascent profile for this craft. Uh, nothing that really gives us any extra delta V once we're in orbit. Maybe a little bit, but uh, it makes things a lot quicker and easier from my end. As I have previously mentioned, uh, this craft will need some upgrades. We'll need bulking up a little bit if I'm to carry any significant payload into orbit, but uh, that's a concern for another day. Arriving at the space station then, we bring our Kestrel space plane into dock. Now, one upgrade I am going to want to make to this craft pretty soon is to fit some more reaction wheels in there, because this thing is sluggish as hell, but we do eventually get ourselves docked, and now it is time to transfer the crew across. Kurdar, Donfort, Bargel and Johnny make themselves comfortable back aboard the Ptolemy. Uh, we give the craft one final look over, just to make absolutely doubly sure it's not missing any fuel. And then, their mission complete, Greyfrit and Erison start to make their way back towards the KSC. We get a good descent, we don't get any of the troubles which uh, dogged the Mark III shuttle a little bit earlier. No, uh, Greyfrit Kerman ably guides us down and to a gentle landing on the KSC runway. Um, but we're not quite done for today just yet. 
We just have time to get the Tommy underway and up to its parking orbit. We uh, we undock from the space station, we manoeuvre it away from a little bit, we get all our solar panels and radiators deployed, and uh, then it's time to fire up those engines. Uh, this will also give us a chance to test that new engine block, uh, see if those upgrades have actually taken effect on existing engines. It turns out they have, which is, uh, which is good news. And uh, it also means that every single one of my currently in-use vehicles has flown in this episode, which I... I don't think it's happened before. Well, not since I've had a decent number of vehicles, anyway. Uh, we're going for an initial parking orbit of 750 kilometers. I will probably raise that up to a thousand at some point, but uh, as I was recording this, it was getting late and those burns were getting a bit long, so I thought I'd, I'd just leave it there and sort it out a bit later on. Uh, as a test flight, though, everything goes perfectly, and uh, the Ptolemy is now only, well, a potential orbit-raising manoeuvre, and a visit from a refuelling craft away from being able to make its transfer burn to Dres, our penultimate goal for this series, and the Ptolemy's third and probably last outing, as I've mentioned. So on that slightly sad note, we will leave both the Ptolemy and this episode here today. I hope you've enjoyed it, everybody. If you have, please consider liking, subscribing, following me on Twitter, link in the description. And uh, next time, of course, well, the uh, the Ptolemy will be off to Dres. We've got a while before the Galileo gets back, so uh, we have an opportunity to do some serious construction work. But uh, yeah, that will have to wait until another day. Until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.